Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now, uh, Arjun is perplexed. Uh, he is perplexed in the matter whether to fight or not to fight. That was his uh, perplexity. After seeing uh, his relative in front of him with whom he was to fight, uh, he was perplexed. <coughs> and uh, there was some argument also uh, with Krishna. Krishna, of course, did not encourage him. Now, here is a point that uh, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. What is that? What? what is this book? So this is the, the translation of the Bible. But, no, you can hear me. I, I am hearing you. Yes, yes, yes. No, don't uh, turn your attention. Just hear me. Uh, yes. uh, Krishna, uh, although He is present there, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but still He did not encourage Him. From worldly point of view, when somebody says that, uh, well, I give it up, I don't want it, I don't want to fight with my friends or my uh, relatives. Better let them enjoy and, and I shall forgo my claim. From worldly point of view, this is a very, uh, I mean, a gentlemanly behavior. The one is for forgoing his claim uh, and for the matter of his relatives or friends. But Krishna is not encouraging that proposal. We have to mark it. Krishna is not encouraging. Krishna is rather, Krishna is rather inducing Arjun that it is not a very good proposal. It is not defeating your position. You belong to the Aryan family. You belong to the Khatriya royal family and you are denying to fight. No, this is not good. And I am your friend. Uh, I have taken uh, the responsibility of your chariot driver and if you do not fight, what people will say. So he is not encouraging. Let's see. Now here is a good proposal from the worldly point of view that Arjun does not want to fight and Krishna is not encouraging. Now what is the point? Somebody may say that Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead, why he is encouraging in the matter of fighting. The people, at the present moment, when there is a question of war, people want to stop that war. At the present moment, the movement is going on between all nations and they do not want war. But here we see that Krishna is not discouraging war. We have to mark this point. He is not discouraging war, but Mm. Uh, he is rather uh, advocating, uh, inducing Arjun that, uh, no, 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 this is not defeating your position. You must fight. Must. So here is a point that sometimes we may do something which is approved by the general public, but it may not be approved by the supreme authority. Uh, superficially, it may appear very appealing to the sentiment of the public, but uh, factually such thing may not be correct, may not be correct. If we accept uh, uh, Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and why he was inducing Arjuna to fight, it does not mean that he was inducing Arjuna to do something wrong. But from a uh, uh, worldly point of view, Arjuna was a very pious man and he was declined to fight and not to kill his kinsman, not to kill his friend. Uh, this, this is a very important point. So he argued, uh, no, no, if I fight, my people will die and the, uh, their wives will become widow and they will be adulterated and then by adulteration uh, unwanted population will increase. And, and who will offer and sadha, sadha, there is a ceremony of sadha according to Hindu scripture. I do not know whether you have in your Christian uh, religion, 
but according to Hindu, a dead body is offered as uh, some respect every year. Just like death anniversary observed, similarly in the family, the uh, descendant, they offer some uh, food stuff after um, some religious ceremony that is called sadh. And uh, it is believed that that offering goes to the uh, dead forefather. So that is a a family religious um, ceremony. So Arjun said that if these people will die, we will offer uh, that uh, evolution to the uh, forefathers. So uh, from ordinary point of view, from the point of view of a family man, he um, argued with Krishna in so many ways. And after, at the end, he uh, decided that I cannot fight. I cannot fight. Then Krishna tried to induce him and uh, he, he said uh, that, uh, yes, you whatever you are saying that uh, uh, I am a Kshatriya and I am not doing my duty, uh, uh, this is all right. Uh, but I, my mind is perplexed. So he, he was at the same time conscious that and Sri Krishna only can make a solution of this perplexity. So he said, Karpanna dusu pa hatasabhava prachyami tang dharma sangamura chita jatse vasan nishchitang burhistan me shishasti hang sadhimang tang prabanyam. Karpanna dus. Karpanna dus means. Uh, a miserly man, miserly man. Uh, uh, he was conscious of the fact that he was a great hero, he was a great fighter, and at the same time, um, the enemies were there. So his actual duty was to fight with the enemy. They are offering fight for a khatriya. Uh, there are some obligations. If, if somebody challenges that I want to fight with you, a khatriya cannot deny. Uh, uh, if somebody challenges, yes, I want to bet with you, uh, gambling, a Khatriya cannot deny. Uh, for that reason, the Pandavas lost their kingdom. His other side, his cousin, offered them that all as let us come to betting. So betting, uh, the bit was, and they, they offered the kingdom. Now if you, if you, uh, I mean to say, defeated, if you are defeated, then you lose your kingdom. So they lost their kingdom. Then the next, next uh, offer was that if you are defeated, you lose your wife. So uh, they, they lost their wife. And uh, similarly, they are put... Now, this time if you are defeated, you have to go to the forest for twelve years. So they, there was a great plan behind them. And the Pandavas were defeated in so many ways. And they were harassed and embarrassed for not less than twenty years. And, and now they, they were to fight face to face. Now he is not um, prepared to fight. And that means he has become miserly. When he is deviating from his duty, Huh? Now, so he is conscious that uh, practically I am deviating from my duty. Karpanna dosa, this is my miserly behavior. Uh, dosa, dosa means uh, it is a fault on my part. Uh, I should not have deviated from this fighting, but uh, my sentiment does not allow me to fight with my kinsmen. So the, here is a perplexity. So karpanna dosa abhata sabhava, hmm? Dharma Sangamura Cheta. Not only I am miserly, but I am deviating from my duty. Dharma. Dharma. Every, uh, this Dharma means according to uh, different position. Uh, just like Brahm, Brahman, the intellectual society, the Kshatriyas, the administrator society, the uh, Vaishyas, the mercantile society, and the Sudras. Uh, Sudras means the laborer class. So these four divisions are always, now you can name in a different way, that doesn't matter, but in every society and for all time these divisions are there. So 
according to Vedic system, uh, this system is observed by generation. So he was a Kshatriya. The Kshatriya's duty was to fight with the enemy and he was not um, executing uh, that uh, I mean, the injunction. Therefore, he is called as that uh, dharma sangamura cheta oh, I am deviating from my religion also. It is the duty of Kshatriya. No. So, so I am now perplexed. So Jatsya Syat Nishchita. Now you should kindly and uh, definitely say. Now here is a position. I, I I do not understand what is to be done. You kindly Jatsya Syat Nishchita. Nishchita means definitely what is right. Breathe on me. Now Krishna can say, well I am already saying you that you should fight, uh, but you are not carrying out the order. Uh, uh, so he says, the Sishasti Hang Sani Mang Tang Prapandam. So he accepted, uh, all right, whatever arguments we have done so far, uh, let us forget that. Now I accept you as my spiritual master, not my friend. Now, the idea of accepting spiritual master, that is also very obligatory, you see. As soon as you accept one as the spiritual master, first of all, uh, we have recorded in your, uh, you have heard it, that uh, acceptance of spiritual master must be selected, you see, after careful examination. Uh, just like uh, one selects his bride or bridegroom after careful examination. Uh, and in India, uh, they are very careful because the marriage of the boys and girls take place under the guidance of the parents. So the parents and uh, very carefully see. So uh, similarly, he, one has to uh, the acceptance of uh, spiritual master is necessary. According to a Vedic injunction, one, everyone should have a spiritual mouth. Perhaps you have seen a sacred thread. We have got sacred thread. And Mr. Quinn, yes, he's going to. Sacred thread. That sacred thread is the sign that this person has his spiritual master, has a spiritual master. Just like here, of course, there is no such distinction. A married girl, and according to Hindu system, they have got some sign there so that people can understand this girl is married. They put on a, a red and, I mean, it's a painting here, uh, so that others know that this girl is married. Uh, and uh, according to uh, what is called this, the division of the here, what is this line you call? Part. Uh, part. What is the spelling? To part. To part. This parting, this parting is also, there is some meaning. Uh, when, when the parting is here in the middle, then that girl has her husband and, and she is uh, coming from respectable family. And if, if the uh, I'm saying partition is here, then he sees a prostitute. You see? A, a, a prostitute cannot, uh, there was king's ruling that uh, a prostitute cannot part here. And again, when, when a girl is well dressed, then uh, it should be considered that uh, she has got her husband at home. And when she is not well dressed, then it should be understood that her husband is out of home. You see? And uh, a, a widow's dress. There are so many, there are symptoms. You see? <laughs> so, mm. similarly, this thread, sacred thread, is a sign that this person has accepted somebody as his spiritual master. He has got his, just like this red mark uh, symbolizes that this girl has her husband. Similarly, this sacred thread is the symbol that this man has got his spiritual master. So there is a ceremony, you see. So according to Vedic system, one has to accept a spiritual master in order to make a solution of his life. And in every step of his life, the spiritual master 
guides. He also makes question to the spiritual master and he guides. So that his, his life, his uh, uh, progress of life may be systematic. Now, to take such guidance means uh, the spiritual master should also be a very perfect man. Otherwise, how can he guide? Now here, uh, Arjun knows that Sri Krishna is the perfect person. So therefore, he is accepting him as uh, Shishya Sriham Sadhimam Tam Prapanna. Uh, I am just surrendering unto you, he said, yourself, uh, and you accept me as, as your disciple. Uh, because friendly talks cannot uh, make a solution of the perplexity. Friendly talks may be uh, going on for years together, but there is no solution. Here, and accepting Krishna as the spiritual master means whatever Krishna will decide, he has to accept. One cannot deny the order of a spiritual master. Therefore, one has to select a spiritual master whose order carrying he will not commit any mistake. Now, suppose if uh, you accept a wrong person as spiritual master, and if you if he guides you wrongly, then your whole life is spoiled. Uh, so one has to and uh, accept a spiritual master whose guidance will make his life perfect. That is the relation between spiritual master and disciple. Uh, it is not a formality. It is a great responsibility both for the disciple and for the spiritual master. And yes. But if the disciple is in ignorance before, yes. how does he know which master to choose? He doesn't have the knowledge. He yes. The yes. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, one should be searching after a disciple. Uh, searching after a spiritual master. Now, uh, just like you search after uh, some school, you search after some school. So when you are searching after some school, you must have at least some preliminary knowledge what a school means. You cannot search after a school and go to a cloth shop. If you are so ignorant, that you do not know what is this school and what is this class of, then it is very difficult for you. You must know at least what is this school. Ah. So that knowledge is uh, like this. Tadvigyanatham sa guru meva avigachet samitpani srutriyam brahman. The spiritual master is required for a person who is inquisitive to have transcendental knowledge. He requires a spiritual mark, is it? So, God, there is another uh, verse in Simad Bhagavatam, uh, Tasmad Gurum Prapadita Jignasu Sreya Uttamam Jas Tasmad Gurum Prapadita. One should search after a spiritual master uh, who is inquisitive about transcendental subject matter. So unless one is at least conversant with the preliminary knowledge of con transcendental matter, uh, that transcendental matter here, here, the, here you can see, Arjun is perplexed and now he wants a uh, definite answer. This is the inquiry about transcendental subject matter. So every human being has to inquire. The inquiry must be there. What is that inquiry? That inquiry is the preliminary that every human being is suffering. A, 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 a ignorant man, just like a cat and dog or an animal, they are suffering, but they do not understand. The suffering they do not understand. Just like um, we have seen, of course, here animals are slaughtered in slaughterhouse. Uh, in according to the Hindu system, of course, uh, cow killing is not allowed. But uh, there are meat eaters. So, according to Hindu system, if anyone wants to eat meat, he should take a goat. Uh, according to Hindu system, only goats and lambs can be killed for meat eating. No other animal. No other animal. Cow is not permitted. Uh, just like and, and the and Hindus, they do not eat cow's flesh. And the Muslim, 
they do not eat, uh, I would say, hogs, hogs flesh, they do not eat. <laughs> they have got some sentiment. But meat eating is also there uh, in the Hindu society, but that is only um, by goats meat or lambs meat. Generally goat, generally goat. Now these goats are sacrificed before a goddess Kali, goddess Kali. So I have seen it that one animal is being killed, slaughtered, and the another animal which will be slaughtered next, you see, it has been given some grass and it is standing there. You see, it has no knowledge that my next turn is mine. So it is not going at it. So this is animal. This is an a human. A human being is not so full. If, if there is sign that next time my killing is, uh, is to be uh, uh, taken up, then he, at least he will protest or uh, try to go away, something like that, you see. But there is no such thing. So the, the distinction between animal and man is that the animal is not um, aware of the um, sufferings he is undergoing. There are sufferings both for the animals and for the man. But man is gone. If a man is not awakened to his suffering, then he is an animal gone. So we are, we should not forget that we are always under suffering. Ah, there are three kinds of suffering. I don't say about this economic problem or that is also another suffering, uh, but uh, according to uh, basic knowledge, or it is a fact, there are three kinds of suffering. One kind of suffering uh, belonging to the body and the mind. Uh, now suppose I am getting some headache. Now I am feeling very warm. I am feeling very cold. Uh, uh, so many bodily uh, sufferings there are. Uh, uh, then similarly, we have got suffering from the mind. My mind is not um, well today. Uh, I have been, uh, somebody has called me something, so I am suffering, or I have lost something, uh, some friend, so many things. So sufferings of the body and mind, and then sufferings by the nature, nature. Uh, this, is, this is called adhi daivik, uh, which you have no control. Uh, in every suffering we have no control, uh, especially, suppose that there is heavy snowfall, uh, the whole New York City, is flooded with the snow and you are all put into inconvenience. That's a sort of suffering. But you have no control. You cannot stop snow falling, you see. <laughs> some, some, there is a wind and cold wave. You cannot stop it. This is called adhi daivik suffering. And the suffering of the mind and suffering of the body is called adhyatma. And there is other sufferings, adhi bhuti, attacked by other living being, uh, my enemy, some animal or some worm, so many. So these three kinds of sufferings are there all. all. And, but we do not want all this. When this question comes, now here Arjun is conscious that and there is a fight and, and it is my duty to fight with the enemy. But there is suffering because they are my kinsmen. Uh, so he is feeling that. Uh, so. Unless a human being is conscious and awakened to the fact that we are always in suffering, but we do not want all this suffering. This question, such a person is required to approach the spiritual world when he is conscious, you see. So long his animal life that he does not know that he is always in suffering. He does not know, he does not care, or he does not want to make a solution. And here Arjuna is uh, suffering and he wants to make a solution and therefore he accepts with his spiritual mind. So when uh, we are conscious of our sufferings, we are awakened to the suffering situation, suffering is there, uh, forgetfulness or ignorance of suffering is no meaning, suffering is there. But when one is very serious uh, to make a solution of his sufferings, then a spiritual master. Required. Just like Arjuna requires now a spiritual mark. Uh, is it clear? Yes. Yes. So the suffering is there. Uh, it does not require any education. Uh, simply a, a thinking, uh, that a slight thinking that I do not want all this suffering, but I am suffering. Why? Is there any solution? Is there, but is there, there is solution. All these scriptures, 
all this Vedic knowledge, everything. And not only Vedic knowledge, now, oh, why you are going to school, why you are going to college, why you are taking scientific education, why you are taking law education, everything is meant for uh, ending our suffering. Uh, if there was no suffering, then nobody would have taken education, is it? But he, he thinks that if I am educated, if I become a doctor, or if I become a lawyer, or if I become an engineer, I will be happy. happy. Uh, that is the ultimate aim. I will get a good job government job, I'll be happy. The happiness is the end of every and, and I mean say persuasion. So but uh, these mitigation of sufferings, they are temporary. Real suffering, real suffering is due to our this material existence. These three kinds of suffering. So when one is conscious about his sufferings and he wants to make a solution of the suffering, then there is the necessity of a spiritual master. Now, and if you want to make a solution of your sufferings and you want to and consult a person, now what sort of person he must be who can end your all suffering? <laughs> that selection must be there. If you want to purchase a, a jewel and a diamond and very valuable thing, and if you go to a grocer's shop, uh, such kind of ignorance, you must be cheated. You must be cheated. At least you must approach to a jewelry shop. Uh, jewelry shop. You said so much knowledge you must have. Uh, so is that question sound? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the necessity of a spiritual master is for him who is conscious of his material suffering. If one is not conscious of his material sufferings, then he is not even on the human being status. He is still in the animal status. Animal status, you see. Now, the modern civilization, the modern civilization is practically they are evading, the evading the real suffering. They are engaged in temporary suffering. But the Vedic system is uh, Vedic knowledge. They are meant for ending the sufferings of, you know, for good, sufferings for good, you see. The human life is meant for that, ending all suffering. Of course we are trying to end all kinds of suffering, our business, our occupation, our education, our advancement of knowledge, Everything is meant for ending suffering. But that suffering is temporary, temporary. But we have to uh, end the sufferings for good. Oh, suffering. That sort of uh, knowledge is called transcendental knowledge. And if anyone is seeking after that transcendental knowledge, this, this Bhagavad Gita is not an ordinary thing. It is transcendental knowledge. And now here uh, the ground is prepared. Ground is prepared. Orjo is conscious of his suffering, perplexity. Now he is seeking a spiritual master. So they, they, we should take the position of Orjo, disciple. When a disciple is serious about, make a, about making a solution of his suffering, then he requires a spiritual master. And what sort of spiritual master? The Krishna the most perfect man, the most perfect man. So a spiritual master is representative of Krishna. Of course, Krishna is not present before us, but at least we must have a person as our spiritual master who represents Krishna. And who can represent Krishna? One who is devotee of Krishna. In the line, disciple success, you see. So, he here, man, Arjun, accepts uh, Krishna as the spiritual master. Now, uh, question may be that why uh, Arjun, there are many learned men, not not only Krishna, but there are Vaisdev and other great sages and Brahmins. Uh, why uh, Krishna was also Khatriya? Uh, Krishna was not a Brahmin. Of course, he he, he took his uh, mana, and he appeared in the family of a Khatriya, and they were cousin brothers. Krishna and Arjun, they were cousin brothers. Krishna was the son um, of the brother 
and Arjuna was the son of the sister. And Arjuna's mother and Krishna's father, they are brother and sister. So they got from a family, in a family relation, they are intimately related, and at the same time they are of the same age and friend. Now, the question may be, why Krishna is accepted as a spiritual one? That is the selection of the disciple. That Arjun says, Nahi prapasyami mumapunudya jachuka muchu sanamindriyanam avapa bhumava asapatna midyam rajyam sulanam upichadipattam. He says that I am so perplexed that my lamentation cannot be satisfied even if I gave the kingdom of the universe. I am going to fight for the kingdom only of this earth or the India. Of course, formally India means Bharat. Now India is a name given by the foreigners. The real name of, of this planet is Bharatvarsha. This planet, uh, now, uh, gradually, it has been cut off. It has been cut off. Uh, just like uh, we have got an uh, immediate experience that some portion of India is now cut off and that is named Pakistan. You know all. Similarly, this whole planet, 5,000 years before, this whole planet was known as Bharatvarsha. Bharatvarsha. And before that, and thousands and millions of years before, this planet was known as Ilavativars, Ilavativars. And now, since the uh, time of uh, Emperor Bharat, there was an emperor whose name was Bharat. So, from the name of Bharat, this planet's name became Bharatvars. So, up to 5,000 years before, why 5,000 years before? They are up to 4,000 years before, although the modern history cannot give account, chronological account, more than 2,500 years. But we are speaking uh, about 4,000 years before uh, this planet was called Bharatvarsha. Now, Arjun said that uh, I'm, uh, we are going to fight for the matter of this Bharatvarsha planet. This is one of the planets in the universe. But uh, if I get the whole planets of these the complete planets of this universe, and without any competitor, is still uh, the perplexity which has arisen in my mind. That cannot be mitigated. So, mm. now see, uh, what, sort, what sort of responsibility is given to the Krishna? Sanjay Uvaj. <clears throat> Sanjay is saying, Eva Mukta Rishiki Sanguraki Suparantapaha Nadasse iti govindam mukta tushni banubaha. Just saying this, uh, Arjun becomes silent. Uh, so I cannot fight. Tamubacha rishikesa prasan nivabharata sena rupan madhi visidantam idangamachaha. Now here Krishna is addressed as a rishikesa. Uh, Rishikesha, we should always remember that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. He, uh, um, he is present as incarnation. Now, uh, God is all-powerful. God is all-powerful. So, if He comes before you, you cannot deny the how is that God has come. Uh, you cannot say that. If God is all-powerful, then it is His um, 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 choice, it is his free will, he can come before you, come before you, provided you are uh, such qualified devotee. So, uh, uh, there cannot be any solid argument that uh, God cannot come or God, of course, so far Vedic literatures are concerned, uh, they accept the incarnation of God. So Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. and. <coughs> Uh, so he uh, is addressed as Rishikesha. Rishi, Rishikesha, it has got a significant, uh, significant meaning. Uh, Rishik, Rishik means a uh, sense. Rishik. And Isha, Isha means Lord. Isha means Lord. So 
He is the Lord of the sense. He is the Lord of the sense. Similarly, Govinda. Govinda. Here also, Govinda name is also there. Yes. Najasya iti Govindam uktya tusning bahuva. Govinda. Govinda. Go means also sense. Go means calm. Go means and, and land. And go means sense. And in the in the means pleasure. One who gives pleasure to the cow, one who gives pleasure to the land, one who gives pleasure to the senses. Uh, so his name is Govind. The two, uh, two names are used here. So we should try to understand what is the meaning of Rishikesh. Rishik means Indriya and Isha means Lord. So Whatever senses we have got, uh, actually the proprietor of the senses, not myself, uh, the proprietor of the senses is God. Just like we are sitting in this room, this room is allotted for our sitting under some consideration of rent or whatever it may be, but this room is not ours. That's a fact. Huh? We should not consider that this is, this is, I am the proprietor of the room. Although I am using it to my um, uh, heart's desire as I like, uh, that is a different thing. But as soon as there is some misunderstanding or the landlord says, now you cannot room in this room, vacate, I have to vacate. Similarly, this is also just like room, this our body. Uh, this body is given to us uh, by God. Uh, under certain condition. And as soon as God likes that you should vacate from this body, I have to vacate. Eh? Nobody can allow us to stay here. Uh, and besides that, just like my hand, my hand, this hand. Now, suppose if this hand is paralyzed, the power of this hand is so long, uh, so long that there is power from the Supreme. Uh, otherwise, if my hand is paralyzed, there is no remedy. There is no remedy, you see. So we are not the owner of this uh, um, uh, body, not the owner of the senses. The senses are just like uh, hired, hired from the Supreme Law. This is a very subtle understanding one should know. So therefore, uh, actually the proprietor of the senses is God. Now, if I am the proprietor of this uh, tape record, then it should be utilized for my purpose. Anything which I own, that should be utilized for uh, my purpose. Your things uh, should be utilized for your purpose. So if God is the proprietor of our senses, uh, then these senses must be used for God's purpose. That is the constitutional position. That is the constitutional position. Now, when these senses are used for other than God's purpose, that is our uh, bonding condition. Like when the senses are purified and it is used for God's purpose, that is natural. Life. That is natural. So whole trouble is that although our senses and everything, whatever we have got, and there is Isho Upanisha, a part of Veda, uh, it is stated there that Isha Vasamidam Sadmam, everything, whatever you see, that belongs to God. Oh. That belongs to God. Now, it is our misunderstanding that uh, we are claiming, all the people of the world, they are claiming as propaganda. Now, just like this uh, American, land, American land, now you are claiming as the proprietor. But is it a fact? Actually, are you proprietor? Huh? Now, say, some uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago when Columbus came, so there were no Americans here. And uh, so you are not uh, proprietor, the land was there. Now, when you shall go away, the land will also be there. So the land belongs to God and everything. Right? Now we say that we have manufactured this typewriter. Now this typewriter, the uh, now ingredient, the iron. Have we manufactured iron? No. Iron is uh, uh, received from the mine. Uh, it is given by God. Uh, nobody can manufacture iron. Nobody can manufacture anything. Uh, they can transform from one thing to another. They can bring out the iron from the mine. They can melt and they can transform the shape of the 
and metal in a different way. So that they can do, but they cannot produce uh, iron. They cannot produce anything, uh, wood, iron, earth, anything, whatever. So the real proprietor is God. Real proprietor is God. Everything. This is God conscious. This is God consciousness. One who is in God consciousness, he is a perfect man. He is a perfect. So here yeah, the significant word Tamubacha Rishi Kesa Prahasan Niva Bharata Sena Ruhayan Madhi Visidantam Idam Bacha. Now uh, Krishna is a smile. Krishna is smiling because uh, and yes, you can open it. Yes. Yes. Krishna is smiling. The just see Arjuna is such a hero, he is my friend. And now he is so much perplexed. Now, when he sat down and he and Arjun accepted Krishna as the spiritual master, now Krishna begins to speak. See, Bhagavan was. See, Bhagavan was. Here, the book does not say uh, uh, the Krishna was. See, Bhagavan was. Now, we should understand what is the meaning of Bhagavan. Uh, Bhaga, Bhaga means. Uh, Opulence, opulence. There are six kinds of opulence. And what are? Yes. Opulence. opulence. Do you follow opulence? Yes. yes. So, what are these opulence? Wealth is opulence. Then strength is opulence. Then and Vaishyasya samakasya, vidyasya, strength. And uh, fame, fame is also opulent. Uh, just like um, uh, um, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the whole Christian world knows. Lord Krishna, uh, everyone knows. Uh, or they, they, apart from that, President Johnson. Uh, now the whole America and the whole world knows who is President Johnson. Mahatma Gandhi, the famous. So fame is also opulent. Ah, and nobody knows me, but he is also a person. He is known throughout the whole world. So this is an opulence. Ah, just like uh, your uh, Rockefeller, they are they're very rich. Uh, so, uh, everyone knows in the world. So they are the opulence, opulent by wealth. Similarly, somebody is uh, opulent by fame, and uh, somebody is opulent by strength. Ah, so strength is op- opulence. Wealth is opulence, and fame is opulence, and then beauty. Beauty is also opulence. Uh, if one, one man or woman is very beautiful, he attracts person. Uh, he attracts. So anything that attracts, that is called opulence. A wealthy man attracts. A, a strong man attracts. Uh, a famous man attracts. If somebody famous man comes here. Oh, so many people will gather to receive him. So these are opulences. Wealth, uh, strength, uh, fame, uh, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. Sixth, anyone who possesses uh, all these six opulences in full, he is God. That is the definition of God. Anyone. So when Krishna was present on this earth, he uh, sold his opulence, opulences in full, uh, opulences in full. Uh, of course, uh, we we have got all these historical records about him. Uh, now, so far as wealth is concerned, uh, uh, he had sixteen thousand. Uh, 108 wives. And for each of them, for each of them, he uh, built a palace. And all those palaces were so nicely uh, built that there was no need of electricity or light. It was bedecked with jewels. So day and night they were uh, blazing, you see. So these descriptions are there. Uh, but if we, can, if we forget that and that he is God, then this will be um, something like story that how a man can uh, marry sixteen wives. How do you mean? But we should always remember that he is God. He is all powerful. And for no other person such and um, um, historical records are there. Only for Krishna. Uh, uh, so 
in strength also and uh, nobody could and um, conquer him uh, and beauty and so far beauty is concerned uh, uh, when he was on the battlefield have you seen any picture of krishna have you seen no no of course any one of you have seen krishna when he was present in the battle of battlefield of kurukshetra at that time he was about 90 years old 90 years old he had his great grandchildren he married 16000 wives and each wife had 10 children and those 10 and the children, they also got East 10, 12 children, just uh, and their children also. So, because he was at that time 90 years old, he, he got at the time great grandchildren also. Uh, so, his family was very great. Uh, now, if you see the picture of Krishna, you will see him just like a boy of 22, 25 years. He was so beautiful. He was so beautiful. Uh, there, uh, that is the sign of God. And it is stated in Brahma Sankhita. Addaita yachitaya nadhyananta rupam adhyam purana purisam navajovanancha. He is the original person because from God everyone, everyone has born. Therefore, he is the original person. Adhyam purana purisam. Purana is the oldest person. He is still navajovanancha. Whenever you will see, God, that is, this is the sign of God. You'll find Him just like a youth, a new youth. Uh, youthfulness means uh, 16 to 24 years. Uh, so, Namaju That is the sign of God. So, He was so beautiful that when, when He was a boy of 15 years old, uh, he is on the, the whole I mean, of, his, of the same age girls, girls of His age, they were after Him. He was so beautiful. So, in beauty, he was super excellent. In wealth, he was super excellent. In strength, he was super excellent. And uh, in knowledge, now, here is this book, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, apart from other books, other knowledge which he imparted to other... Now, here is a book which was imparted to Arjun. Now, it is so... The depth of knowledge and people are still considering great, great scholars uh, that we are not reading, but uh, Dr. Radha Krishna, one of the greatest scholars of the world, now he is the president of India. He is discussing. Uh, Professor Einstein, uh, he was living here in America. He was a German Jew, and uh, I think he was living in America. He was a great student of this Bhagavad Gita. Hitler, Hitler was a great student of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and there are many scholars who are still reading Bhagavad Gita, trying to understand. Just see what depth of knowledge he has given. It is made by Krishna. So, in knowledge, in wealth, in strength, in beauty, uh, and in everything was up. Therefore, he is Bhagavad Gita. You cannot uh, uh, accept any ordinary man as Bhagavan. Uh, therefore, Bhagavan. Now, the Bhagavan Uvacha, and because he has been accepted as the spiritual master, just like a teacher has uh, the right to uh, sometimes rebuke this student. So, in the first instance, he is rebuking Arjun in the following word that Asachyan Anusutastam Pragyabhadansh Bhasase Gatasun Agatasun Cha Nanu Suchanti Pandita. That uh, Arjun, you are speaking just like a very great learned man, but you are, uh, uh, you are, in other words, you are a fool. You do not know uh, how things are going on. Uh, because Pandita, those who are learned man, they would not have lamented just like you are doing. That means indirectly he said, Pandita means learned. Learned man uh, does not lament over a dead body or a living body. Gatasuna, gatasuns. Suns means life. One has lost his life and one has got his life, uh, a body. 
लिविंग बॉडी एंड ए डेड बॉडी लिविंग बॉडी एंड डेड बॉडी जस्ट मार्क द पॉइंट दैट ए ए लर्नड मैन एज यू आर लेमेंटिंग ओवर द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ किलिंग योर फ्रेंड्स एंड रिलेटिव बट ए लर्नड मैन वुड नॉट हैव लेमेंटेड लाइक दिस दैट मीन्स यू आर ए फूड वेन यू से that like uh, if i say mr green what you have done any intelligent man should not have done this so this is indirectly saying that you are not intelligent it is in a gentleman's way speaking that uh, mr green what you are doing uh, no intelligent man can do this uh, that means you are not intelligent so here he, he says and uh, that uh, you are lamenting over mm, the bodies of your relatives because you are in the fight when considering that uh, my uh, friends and my relatives will be killed so that means uh, they are living bodies and you are lamenting over the uh, over their killing so this sort of lamentation is never done by a learned man a learned man never does it गोतासुम अगोतासुम स्वनानु सूचंति पंडिता दोस वर लाने वन हु इज लाने ही डज नॉट लैमेंट ओवर द बॉडी आई दैट ए लिविंग लिविंग बॉडी अ डेड बॉडी देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन ना बिकॉज वन हु नोस द डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन द बॉडी एंड द सोल आर वी कैन जस्ट लाइक and uh, you have heard the name of socrates socrates great philosopher greek philosopher he believed in the and uh, uh, immortality of soul and uh, so he was punished in the court hemlock hemlock was offered to him that all like if you believe the immortal immortality of soul and then you drink this hemlock poison uh, so he drank uh, because Uh, he was uh, firmly convinced that uh, even if I drink this poison, my body will be destroyed. By the uh, by destruction of my body, I am not going to be destroyed. He was convinced, uh, so he did not learn it. Uh, so uh, a pundit, when a learned man, must know that this body and soul, uh, the distinction, the difference between body and soul, uh, the body is not soul. and the soul is not body and one who knows he is learned man this instruction is given first uh, so for spiritual advancement uh, this first knowledge that the body and the soul is different this uh, the body cannot be identified with the soul is it and uh, but the soul is there at and uh, but body is not so body is not so so every learned man knows it and uh, we should be i think we can stop here